Hello Living Dead Dolls fans, this is Josh, aka Doggy Pants, and I'm coming at you in partnership with Mezco Toys for another Living Dead Dolls review. So, today I'm very excited because we're going to be taking a look at the Living Dead Dolls The Lost in Oz set, which is awesome. The fact that they did this, uh, it seems like a no-brainer, so I'm super stoked that it actually came to fruition. Um, and basically, they're done in the same way that they did the Alice in Wonderland set. So, they had, you know loved characters from past series redesigned as these characters from you know uh, classic works of literature so basically Alice in Wonderland this time it is the Wizard of Oz and it is the Wizard of Oz the book version not the movie I had a lot of people that were going why has she got ruby slippers well it's because in the book she doesn't have ruby slippers and um oh and also there is a variant set to this this uh series as well so there is a variant set with a chase doll which is the wizard Definitely worth snagging. They have not been released yet in America. They've shown up in the UK. Um, I have a feeling they're going to be exclusive to Mesco Direct, but they haven't actually told me, so I don't know for sure. Um, hopefully I'll get them, fingers crossed, because I really, really love the wizard. And I'll talk a little bit more about him in, uh, you know, later on in this video. But starting, uh, starting with this video, we're going to take a look at the window boxes, because they are window box dolls. Uh, and then we will move to the dolls from my uh, least favorite to my favorite. So I'm gonna show you the, do or the box first. Here we go, this is what the box looks like. It's a really beautiful window box. It's really, really nice. The green and the gold uh, kind of representing the Emerald City. It says Living Dead Dolls right there. And then it says the Living Dead Dolls, the Lost in Oz. And Oz is, uh, the O of that is the opening for the window box. Um, and it's super, super cool. And then it says the character uh, so this one is Purdy as the Scarecrow. It says right there at the bottom. On both the left and the right, we've got a sneak peek of the Chase doll for the variants, which is the Wizard. So there he is right there. Right there, it does say the Lost in Oz. And on the back, we've got uh, kind of the promo shot of all the sets. So we've got the Witch up there at the top, the four main dolls, and then they're kind of on the Yellow Brick Road, and they've got, maybe that's the Emerald City in the background. But yeah, but that is the box. Oh, I do want to show you. Whoop, reach for it too. The inside of the box so you can get a better look at kind of what's going on inside there. It's a grayscale version of, of you know, the Yellow Brick Road, and then this kind of, uh, it might be the Emerald City, it might be the Witch's Castle, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but there is some trees there as well. So it's kind of scary looking on the inside. Yeah, but that is the box. So again, I'm going to go from my least favorite doll to my favorite, um, and it's, it's tough. This one's really tough because this set is really good, um, and it's a bummer. I feel bad by saying any of them are my least favorite, but I'm gonna go for it. My least favorite is Teddy. I know, Teddy is the lion. And Teddy is actually one of my favorite living dead dolls of all time. So for him to be in last place for me is kind of breaks my heart a bit and I feel bad, but what can you do? Um, and there's a specific reason that he's my least favorite, which I'm gonna get to in a minute, but let's take a look at his outfit. He's got this giant onesie, right? Um, and it is kind of a, almost like a velour material. Uh, so there's definitely kind of like a little bit of a fuzz to it. He's got these cute little puppy toes right there with some thread sewn to give him, uh, you know, like toes. Uh, same kind of thing is done for the hands with fingers. He's got, it almost looks like the same mitts that we saw on Squeak, but they're sewn onto the onesie, so it's all one piece. I kind of wish they would have done that with Squeak, because you lose her gloves really easily. It, yeah, she's got these three buttons on the front, which is kind of interesting in the design because it makes it look like this isn't his body. It's actually an outfit that he's wearing. Um, three buttons. They're just decorative, but this does Velcro up the front. So I'm going to open it up so you can kind of see. So you, it separates the lion mane there at the bottom, um, and you can take this off. It's all one piece. On the back, he does have a tail, this little tail that's done there with some fur coming off the back end of it. And then he's got this beautiful lion's mane, right? So it goes all the way around the head. He does have these cute little ears that are poking out on the top. There they are. Boom, boom. Um, and then it goes a little bit further down in the back of the onesie. And it is sewn right there. See that? That is sewn to the back, so it's not just hanging there. This is a hood, so you can pull it back. And here's the reason that he's not my favorite favorite. It's that he doesn't have any hair. I I just, mm, I, I, I don't mind a bald living dead doll, but I like it so much more when they have hair, especially when it's in an outfit where it's kind of a surprise that they have it. You weren't expecting it. Like Teddy. Teddy has hair under his, uh, his bear outfit. So I kind of wish he had that. Let's take a look at his face paint. Um, he's got these cute little curly, you know, cues coming off the mouth. So it looks like kind of an old school 
lion costume with a couple little dots. He's got the little lion nose. And then the shading, it's not shading, but it's the color around his eye is a really dark blue. It's not black. It's blue. Um, and then yellow eyes. And then he has that same kind of blue down the front of his face. It's almost, it almost feels like they were trying to make it look like he's got a little bit of fur on his face, but it does stop at a certain point. You see that? So he is got kind of the regular skin tone on the back of his head. But yeah, but there we go. That is, there we go. That is Teddy as the lion. Still super, super cute. Love him. But that's Teddy. There we go. Next up for me is Valpurgis as the witch. And she's got one of the best designed outfits in this series. Um, uh, but I just like the other ones a little bit more. Um, but let's take a look at his out her outfit. So she's got this skirt that is all pleating and it's almost like a silk kind of material. It's a really cool pleating. Look at that. It goes all the way around. Um, this is all one piece, by the way. Uh, and then she's got this really lovely bodice. This bodice has this lace material over that same kind of silk. Um, so it's, it's over top of silk here, it, but that same lace materials on her arms and there's no, none of the silk underneath that, so you can just see the skin popping through there. She's got a really puffy sleeve with a little bit of green ribbon detail going on right there. Or I guess it's not sleeve, it's uh, her shoulders. Yeah, so like a puffy shoulder. There's a little bit of like, almost like a, what is that referred to, a peplum? It's definitely a peplum here around the waist with a little bit of ribbon here. But there's a little bit of a flare out around her wrists as well. Now her collar is a high collar. There's some green kind of silk on the inside and on the outside it's black. Again, this is all one piece and Velcro's all the way up to the top of the collar. So you can take this all off, which is nice. Then she's got this amazing hat and they designed this hat really differently than they've designed other Living Dead Dolls witch hats in the past. And the way that they did it is it's got the regular elastic on the bottom, but there's a wire detail that goes all the way around the brim of the hat. And then there's also that same wire is in going up the seam in the back of the hat. So you can kind of bend the hat however you wish, both on the, the brim and on the pointy part, which I love because the hat itself is actually a little too small to fit all the way down on her head. So it gives it like you can kind of shape it a certain way and put it a certain way on her head or however you want to do it. I kind of, I designed it like this so she could wear it a little bit on the side of her head. I think it's super cute. Um, she does have a really, really nicely thickly rooted hair for a doll that's pulled back into a, a, a ponytail. Um, it is held in ponytail with that kind of clear plastic, but you could take it down if you wanted to, and I bet she would look really, really great. I'm leaving mine the way it is currently, but you know, whatever. Um, here's her face paint. Here we go, let the light adjust. So she's got a really black lip, uh, red eye with white pupil, really thick black eyebrow, black eyelashes, and then she has that kind of tree detail that's unique to Valpurgis. Um, a little bit of airbrushing around her eyes as well. I've noticed um, that with the glow-in-the-dark dolls, because she is a glow-in-the-dark doll, her whole body is glow-in-the-dark, by the way, um, the paint that they use seems to be slightly different than the paint that they use for other dolls. Um, and the lines seem to be a little bit thicker. Uh, yeah, so she has that same kind of feel to normal living the dolls, you know, glow-in-the-dark dolls, which I'm always, you know, curious about. Like, what is it about the, the plastic that they use that's glow-in-the-dark that affects the, the paint? But yeah, there we go. There she is. Valpurgis as the witch. I'll mess with her hat later. But there she is. Um, next up in third place is probably one of the most intricate outfits. I mean, Valpurgis is pretty intricate. Uh, but uh, for this set, and that actually is the Scarecrow, which is surprising, right? But there is a lot, a lot going on this with this doll. One thing I want to point out is when this was first announced, they had announced which dolls were going to be playing which characters. And everybody's like, oh, well, da Isaac will be the Scarecrow. But they didn't go that route. They were really kind of smart. They went with Purdy, Purdy, whose brain, you know, pops in and out. And that, you know, finally had a brain, which is kind of amazing. I love that they did that. Uh, yeah, but let's take a look at the outfit. The outfit has so many parts to it. Just be aware of that. Um, so we've got these brown shoes, right? And then there's this straw coming out of the shoe. It looks like it's coming out of the shoe, but it's actually attached, sewn to the bottom of the pant. There we go. So you can kind of see how uh, the bottom of the overalls, you can see it's sticking out of the boot right there, but it's sewn along there. And then he's got this overcoat, this overcoat, which is a denim overcoat, 
Um, it's uh, a full overcoat, goes all the way around. Um, it's hard to stuff everything in there, so you can see it might stick out a little bit in the back. Um, there's these cute little button details on both sides. There we are. It's really dirty and kind of tore up in a few places. You're going to see at the bottom there, right? Um, now it looks like, this is where it gets kind of crazy, it looks like the straw would be sewn to the inside of the arm, kind of like they did with Isaac, right? It's not done like that. The way that they did it, I'm going to try to take them off really carefully because the straw is delicate. Here we go. Oof is they're like little cuffs, right? So the straw is sewn to a, a elastic that you have to pull up and over his arm. I'm gonna take them both off so I can take this coat off. But again, you wanna be super careful with this because that straw can fall off really, really easily. Now I'm gonna take his coat off so you can see what's going on underneath all of this. Ooh, got a little mess, there we go. Come on. All right, here we go. Oh, I also want to point out, he's got shoulder pads, too, on the inside, which I think is kind of funny. I don't know if they were just trying to give him a little bit more lift there, or I don't know what's going on. But he's got shoulder pads. He's a powerful businesswoman from 1983. Um, here we go. And this is what's going underneath. Now, unlike most living dead dolls with undershirts, he has full sleeves, which is incredible. I love it. I, you know, I'm I'm surprised that they went as far as they did to give him a full coat because he actually looks pretty good with just like this, you know, uh, but they did and that's super cool. So he's got these overalls that are a separate piece, mind you, a separate piece than the blue uh, checkered shirt underneath. So these overalls actually come off, you can take them off, and you're going to see that he's got a full separate shirt on underneath. And this shirt also Velcros right up the back. So. That's a lot of pieces for one living dead doll, right? It's really nice quality. And uh, he's got the little pocket on the front, kind of standard living dead dolls overalls. So it's really, 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 really nice. He does have a little hole here, <laughs> which I love. Kind of his dirty outfit. Um, there we go. And then he's got this, this hood, right? So I'm going to hold up the hood so you can kind of see what's going on. This hat is sewn to the top of the hood. It's not a separate piece. I mean, it is, but it's tacked. You'd have to untack it. But let's take a look at the hood first. We've got two button eyes. One's larger than the other one. A little bit of black staining around there. And then a sewn on? Is that sewn? No, that's actually... That's it's just like black marker drawn on mouth. Then he's got uh, this uh, almost like a shoelace, like a dark shoelace that's, that's holding it in place. I'm going to untie it and show you how it's done on there. So it's uh, wrapped a couple times around him but you can take it off easily. So we're taking him all apart, <laughs> or her, since she is a girl. The hat, again, here we go. Here's the hat, it's uh, tore up, there's a lot of holes. That same kind of uh, ribbon of the shoelace is around the top of the hat. It's tacked up in the front so that that doesn't hang down on his face. Um, and again, it's tacked to the top of this hood. But this hood is removable, and we're gonna remove it to show this is in fact Purdy un underneath, right? It looks just like the design of Purdy. So look at the face paint. She's looking up, she's got a yellow eye, some intense eyelashes, a little bit of a shading around her eye, kind of unique pattern, and same shading around her mouth. This this doll is kind of a, a brown colored doll, which I love, um, especially there's that kind of brown, brown standing around the top of her head, and then she has no brain. Right. There's no blood or anything, which I kind of wish there was a little bit of blood, but I don't mind it. Um, and this is where I want to talk about the wizard. What's great about the wizard doll in the chase set for the variants is that he comes with everything that these three characters need, right? So he has the brain that you could pit, put into Purdy, if you'd like. Comes with a heart, which is similar to the Bride of Valentine heart, which is the Bride of Valentine is playing the Tin Man. And then the best accessory ever created by Living Dead Dolls, in my opinion. He comes with this little black pouch with two ball-bearing pellets in it so that uh, the lion can have his courage and have brass balls. Brilliant, right? But yeah, but that is Purdy as the Scarecrow. I'm not going to put him completely back together, or her, back together, um, but uh, I will do that much for right now, just so you can see them all together in a minute. But that is uh, the Scarecrow. So... Next up is the Lost. The Lost as um, Dorothy, right? Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. She's super cute. I love this design of this doll. 
about as simple as you could possibly get, uh, but but really really nice. So she's got this. Uh, the the dress is two separate pieces, right? So we've got this uh, the skirt, which is black and white checkered skirt. Uh, it comes up over the shirt. Here we go, and it does Velcro right here in the back. You kind of unVelcro it. There we go. You can see that. And then she's got this uh, shirt underneath, and it's kind of like um, God, what material is that? Almost like a spandexy kind of material. Uh, it's it's like a, a black kind of mock turtleneck going on in there. It does Velcro up the back, and there is a little bit of elastic here on the arm, so you can push that up a little bit if you wanted to. To give her a little poof in the sleeve. Um, she does have silver shoes. Again, this is based on the book, not the movie. So her shoes are silver and she has white socks. Um, her hair is pretty thinly rooted. It's only rooted around uh, the outside and then down this part in the middle. So you're not going to want to take out these braids that she's got going on down the back of her hair. Um, otherwise, it'll look really, really thin. Uh, so the braids go down. There's a little bit of curl to the hair at the bottom. You can see it right there um yeah but that's her hair again super super simple doll then she's got the oh so simple lost face paint which is what makes the lost i think one of the most haunting dolls ever a simple black lip black eye with just a white dot in the middle and then this beautiful airbrushing around the eye it's really gorgeous super super simple doll um she does come with oh sorry about that <laughs> getting ahead of myself Sorry, I'm, 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 yeah, no, you know, she's she's seen some terrible things and got blown around in a tornado. She doesn't mind falling six inches. Um, all right, so there, that is her. She does come with an accessory. She comes with Toto, Oh, And Toto has seen better days. I'll hold it up. Toto done got run over by a car. Um, so basically this is kind of a, it almost feels like Oh God, what is that? I don't know. It's fuzzier than felt, um, but it's cut out in the shape of a dog. It's on both sides, so it's it's not uh, it's not super cheap looking. Uh, he's got the cute little paws drawn on there. Um, here's his face. I'm gonna hold up his face. So he's got uh, you know his little X's for eyes. His tongue stick tongue sticking out, um, and then uh, he's got this amazing tire mark over top of him really really cute and he does have a leash so you can have her holding the leash as well really really sad poor toto seen better days but that is the lost as dorothy sorry about letting you fall like that I'm terrible all right so that means that my favorite doll is the tin man bride of valentine as the tin man oh my gosh it's just she is such a nice doll you guys everything about this doll is just super super high quality this plastic material that they used for this coat is really it's really really thick it's almost like a pleather but it's really really thick and look at all of the kind of detailing that's going on those like fake three buttons the stitching that goes around the outside there's a little bit of this kind of spandex material here in the joint so it looks like she's got an elbow joint um, that same kind of spandex material is what the pants are made out of. Oh, actually, it's not just pants either. Let me, this is a Velcro on the front, this jacket. So I'm going to, so you kind of Velcro it open here, pull this out, and it's it's like a it's like a 1970s bodysuit with a mock turtleneck. I mean, come on. Look at this shiny material. It's incredible. So, so good. Um, and it goes down. It's not complete footy. They're not complete tights. Uh, so they do end on the ankles. Uh, with these amazing, like, rusty-looking silver boots. Look at those things. So good. Um, sorry, I cannot express how much I love this doll. Uh, yeah, but that's the jacket. She is a silver doll. And then she's got this cute, cute hat, right, with a little bit of elastic. I'm going to pull it off so you can see her. Wow. The way that it's shaped. It's the same material as coat. There is a little bit of uh, looking like rust going on around it as well. There's elastic right there around her chin. Um, but yeah, but that's her. She does have a lot of uh, gel in her hair to kind of keep it in place. I might comb that out or wash it out eventually, but she was so cool looking that I was kind of scared to mess with her right off the bat. 
Her hair is very choppy, but not in a bad way. It kind of works with this doll. It feels very similar to uh, Absinthe, kind of the hair and the way that it's built and all of the gel. Um, she's got this metallic paint going on on her face. I'm going to hold this up so you can get a really good look at this face paint. So we've got a red lip, metallic body paint, right? There's a little bit of rust down there on the bottom of her cheeks. It almost looks like the metal is cracked or something like going from one eye. Um, and it looks like the reason that it's cracked is because those are actual screws. Actual screws, not even fake ones. Actual screws that were screwed into her eye. It looks like there's some oil tears that are coming down from experiencing that. And that this one kind of cracked the metal in the face, right? It's really, really cool. I love this doll. So, so neat. Um, yeah, but that's her. The, the hair rooting is pretty decently thick. It's hard to tell with all the gel. It does come from one single point in uh, the top of her head. Super, super cute. All right, I'm going to put this back on now. Um, and she does come with an accessory. Both she and Dorothy, the rest of the dolls, do not. Um, again, this is Bride of Valentine. I opened her up to see if there was like... Um, a hole where her heart should be or like some blood or something but there's not uh but that's okay um still cool again the wizard comes with the heart for her uh if you get the variant set where is her accessory here it is uh and it's a standard living to doll's axe that she comes with right because she's the uh tin you know tin man so the tin man has an axe uh there's blood on it it's the one that we first saw with Lizzie Borden, we've seen it uh, with the Resurrection Lizzie Borden's as well. There's a peg so she can hold it in her hand. But again, Tin Man, best doll of the set, in my opinion. And uh, I've seen some other collectors say the same thing. It's because the quality of the doll. The quality with Living Dead Dolls really jumps up and down. This is one where the quality is super, super, super high. So worth snagging if you can. But that's it. This is the set. I'm going to try to get them all up here for you to take a look at together. Again, Scarecrow doesn't have all of his stuff on because uh, I don't want to make you wait for that, but you get the idea. There they are. Living Dead Dolls Oz set, you guys. Super, super cool set. Definitely worth snagging. Also worth snagging the variants. The variants, uh, they're kind of an Emerald City uh, version of all the dolls and they're wearing glasses because in the book they actually you know it's not emerald the city they they wear emerald glasses so they're all wearing sunglasses which is super cute uh, and then obviously there is the wizard as well who's a super super cool doll but that's it thank you guys so much for watching uh that is living dead dolls in oz uh i will be back soon i promise i'll talk to you guys later bye someday i wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are falling